Hi friends, it was my birthday last week, so let's do a book haul. Hi friends, my name is Bart, welcome back to the channel and this week we're doing a book haul of all the books I got for my birthday. As always, I link the books down below in the comments so you can uh, have a look for yourself. I'll do the normal, regular books uh, to be added to my never-ending TBR first and we'll end this video with, with a showstopper. I mean, you'll have to watch all the way up to the end but I assure you, it will be worth it because there is a piece de resistance. Ready? Let's dive into it. So the first one is Daisy Jones and the Six. I know, I'm a little late to the party because this is currently a series running on Amazon Prime. And I haven't seen any of it just yet because I wanted to read the book first. If you don't know, Daisy Jones and the Six is about the rise and fall of a famous rock band in the 70s. And this book is supposedly their story. It is written by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was a bit of a discovery for me last year when I picked up uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which was a book that I didn't think that would resonate with me, but I ended up liking very much. So this is my second Taylor Jenkins Reid book and I'm a few chapters in, as you can see, and I'm already liking it a lot. Now the book is written in this strange interview format, which takes kind of getting used to, but once you're familiar with it, it reads like watching some sort of TV interview with a band. So hope to finish this one soon so I can get to the Amazon Prime series, which is, I am told, very good, but I haven't seen any of it yet. So if you have seen the series, let me know in the comments, uh, should I watch it or should I just leave it with the book? Second, uh, three books, I guess, is the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Again, a bit late to the party. Now, here's me breaking my own rule. Normally, I always read the books first before I watch a movie or a series, because in my head, I want to make up how the characters look for myself and not identify the characters with the face of an actor in a series or a movie. But this time I started watching the series first. Shadow and Bone has its second season airing on Netflix um, at the moment. I'm almost through second season and I'm loving it. So it's high time I start reading these books. So if you're not familiar with these books, um, Shadow and Bone series by Lee Bardugo is a fantasy series with a lot, a lot of magic. It follows the tale of Alina Stalkov, um, just a simple girl, a cartographer, who finds out that she uh, she knows magic and in fact she's a very, very powerful Grisha, which is a mage, I guess. And her magic can actually save the world from the Darkling, which is a bit of a shadow magician. I know that's a very brief summary of the series, but I don't want to spoil too much if you haven't seen or read it yet. So Shadow and Bone, both the series and the books, I highly, highly recommend. The third one is something totally different and I'm looking forward to this one very, very much. This is the Dutch version of The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont. It's a novel, but it delves into an ancient old mystery that actually happened. In 1926, the author Agatha Christie vanished for 11 days. She found out that her husband was cheating on her and simply vanished. No one knew where she was. It was national and international news. The whole country was in a tizzy. There were search parties, police investigations, dogs were used, mountain rescue was used, but no one knew where she was. And then after 11 days, she suddenly appeared again in a very small hostel somewhere in the English countryside, where she was found using the name of her husband's mistress to uh, sign into the hotel. Up to today, we don't know what those 11 days were about. Was she there alone? It was said that she suffered from temporary amnesia. And this book is about those days. This book is the story from the mistress's point of view. And it explains and delves deeper into the world of lies and deceit. It's a psychological thriller, but it's also a love story. I've always been wondering about that mystery, that vanishing of Agatha Christie, and I'm really curious on uh, the take of the author on this, this case. So the Christie Affair, looking forward to this one very much. Last one on the list is this one, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by uh, Coco Mellors. And I must admit, I don't know a lot about this book. This is one of those books that I, you can say TikTok made me buy it. I'm trying to expand my uh, normal genres. I normally always read fantasy or thrillers or whodunits. And this year I've been trying to branch out and read other genres as well. And this book fits into that strategy very well. New York is slipping from Cleo's grasp. 
24 at a different party every night and with a student's visa that's swiftly running out. She doesn't even have money for cigarettes. But then a chance encounter on New Year's Eve offers her a way out. Frank, successful and 20 years older, can give her the security she craves and the green card she needs. And in Cleo, he sees a life filled with beauty, art and freedom. As the two rush headlong into an impulsive marriage and their friends are drawn into its tumultuous orbit, what began as a chance meeting will change all their lives forever. So I guess it's a romance novel? I'm not really sure. I know this is a very popular book on social media, but it's not one of those, you know, seven books you always get recommended over and over again. So I'm giving this a chance. And I'll guess I'll have to get back to you on this one. So who knows? Might be a future video, let me know if you're into that. And then there was that other gift. Last Christmas I was gifted the Penguin Clubbound Classics uh, Dickens edition with six uh, novels from Charles Dickens in a beautiful, beautiful edition. And I said I want to start a collection. I want to own all of the Penguin Clubbound uh, books at some point and display them all over my bookshelves. So my parents heard that remark and somehow remembered it. So yeah we have the Bronte collection. So these are probably the best known uh, books by the Bronte sisters. We have Villette, Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. And oh, look at them. They are gorgeous glove bound books. They come in into this cover. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, display them in uh, their box because several boxes do not necessarily fit the shelves, but oh, look at that. Even the boxes themselves are gorgeous as are these books. And I would have been very, very happy with just this gift. But there was more. It wasn't just the Bronte collection, it was the Jane Austen collection as well. I mean, look at these. Again, they come in a beautiful, beautiful box and just look at these editions. All cloth bound, the seven must have Jane Austen books. There's Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, there's Emma, Love and Friendship, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey and Mansfield Park. Again, not sure if I'm going to uh, display them in the box, but I'm certainly keeping these boxes because they, they are just gorgeous, they are stunning. I mean, look at these, look at this sense and sensibility. It's fully club bound hardback, gorgeous design. They are just stunning. I'm simply in love with these Penguin Club Bound classics and one day I am going to own all of them and just show them off on my shelves. I have, I probably have all of these books in other editions as well already somewhere on my shelves, but I don't care. So show me your love for these beautiful Club Bound editions in the comments or any of the other books. That was it for me for this week. Hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.